Well, a new study has shed light on the vast scale of wild fishing involved in the trade and sale of exotic marine aquarium fish. Researchers say murky supply chains raise questions about the ethical catching and selling of these fish, which can then be bought at pet stores and online. Dr Bing Lin is a marine scientist at the Thriving Oceans Research Hub at the University of Sydney and is with me now. Uh, good morning to you, Bing. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, good morning. Now, 90% of marine fish sold by major US retailers are wild caught, including threatened and endangered species. That's the headline takeout from this research. Just how surprising, firstly, is that finding? Yeah, that's a good question. I think generally people in the trade know that the vast majority of fish are wild caught. What was surprising was the fact that even through this evolution towards online e-retailers, which is what we um, studied, that this kind of very consistent figure carried through. And it, both, it affects fish, obviously, in the United States, but it really is an interconnected global web, and that's surprising. Yeah, and that's what I want to ask you about. This is obviously a US stat, but what about here in Australia? Is there a similar situation? Yeah, Australia is really unique in the sense that it is both a major exporter and importer of marine aquarium fish. Oftentimes countries are either one or another, but Australia, given you know the jewel of the Great Barrier Reef, houses around 60% of all marine aquarium traded species um, globally, but it also imports fish. It's in the top 20 importers and exporters. So it is a big issue here at home too. So just how strongly does the retail fish business, you know, for people who go into pet stores and they see fish or specialist um, fish shops to go in and have their aquariums at, at home, or indeed at commercial premises. How much does that business rely on wild population? Yeah, almost exclusively right now. Um, our study found around 90% of the cases in e-retailers in the United States, but almost exclusively the entire industry is reliant on the backs of these wild caught fish. Um, it's also a huge and hidden industry. Um, it's estimated to be around 3 billion Australian dollars globally, affecting around over 50 million individuals. The Australian government thinks it's estimated to be around worth 350 million Australian dollars every year here. So it really is huge and no one really knows much about it. Yeah, so can you explain, you know, if a consumer is going into a, a shop to go and buy one of these species, what are the species that you're talking about here? Yeah, so our study basically ranks all the most commonly traded species we found. Um, up at the top are your wrasses, your damselfishes, including your nemos, your clownfish. Um, you have your gobies, you have your ceranids, which are your snappers, you have angelfish. All the most common iconic reef fish you can think of, chances are it'll be available for sale too. And some of these are endangered? Yeah, yeah. So we found dozens of species to be endangered um, in our study. Around well, 734 species we found attributed to the trade. Around 40, uh, 45 were either threatened, according to the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or in declining, um, having declining population trends. So would you suggest that consumers would be unwittingly going about buying these fish that are endangered? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like oftentimes, I mean, speaking from experience, you really don't have a sense of whether the fish you buy, A, exactly where it comes from, and B, its endangerment status. When I'm in the shop, that's probably not first and foremost on my mind. Mm. And that's a problem because consumer awareness is a huge reason for this demand. So how do you trace the supply chain then and bring up awareness? Yeah, that's for a future study to figure out, but there are definitely ways you could do it. Um, I think one way is to have clearer um, international governing bodies to kind of certify where the fish are coming from, somewhat like eco-certification labels or schemes where you can reliably know where the fish was sourced from. And a lot of it also has to come from just wanting to improve the transparency and traceability of the supply chain. Um, a lot of it comes from consumer pressure. A lot of it comes from really effective both national and international legislation. So there's definitely room for improvement and we should definitely take advantage of that. So what is the regulation around this? Uh, yeah. at the moment as it stands. Currently, internationally, there's something called the Convention of the International Trade of Endangered Species, or CITES for short, that governs species that are allowed to be traded depending on what appendix or level of threatenedness they are in the wild. Mm. What's problematic is we really don't know the exact 
provenance of the fish that are being sourced from and how endangered they are. So when we can't even figure out what's in the trade, it's hard to improve the trade overall. Mm. Mm. So it's a matter of yeah, not being able to uh, um, improve what we can't measure.